Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Tristan Barracks here, the digital storyteller, and this is a tutorial video. Uh, a lot of you guys uh, kind of requested and asked me about um, one of my projects that I just recently released called Praise and Worship, um, and and a lot of you guys responded back and said, "Man, this is a dope project. I love how you shot it." Asked me about you know the tools I used to shoot it, how I color corrected it, how I edited it, where where did I find the music? So this video is kind of response to all those questions, or at least uh, the specific question that I keep on getting asked, which is, "How did I color correct it? How did I grade it?" Um, so I'm actually going to go through um, how I actually approached this particular project and and other project uh, projects how I how I kind of jump into the footage and and really try and find the tone try and find the right feel the right balance of kind of like the cinema uh, cinema uh, film sort of feel and then at the same time you know, keeping keeping the realism and keeping the tactile nature of um, you know what I create. So this is going to be a really really dope uh, tutorial. At least I hope it is. <laughs> I hope that you enjoy it. Uh, please uh, consider uh, subscribing to the channel and also sharing it with others. And I'll let you in on on a little secret. I'm going to be giving away some lots. Some LUTs, yes. Uh, for those of you that don't know what LUTs are, they're lookup tables. Um, I have a a set of LUTs that um, I created a few years ago, and I just want to gift it to those that subscribe to the channel, uh, that that love what I'm doing, and that are sharing it with others. Because it's really, really important as we build a community that you invite others to uh, to enjoy the process. So let's jump into Final Cut. All right, so now we're in Final Cut Pro, and one of the things I want to kind of show you is, you know, it, it, when I'm working with my process and I'm, I'm trying to figure out exactly what I want to do in terms of creating a look, I always like throwing in some of my favorite shots or shots that that are different in exposure and in and in um, look and feel, because I want to be able to to take all of the the different types. Of, of shots within the film and then put it together to create a kind of a master look. And, and that's really important to me. So when we look at this timeline here, this timeline has, you know, a, a couple of different shots. The, the ladies are in different outfits. They're in a white outfit. They're in a black outfit. Um, and then also a red outfit over here. And, um, a part of my process, because I, maybe this is just the artist in me, is like I like listening to music. I like hearing the music. I like um, the music being a part of my process. So uh, one of the the albums, um, soundtracks that I was listening to a lot while I was crafting this film was the If Bill Streets Could, Could Talk um, album or soundtrack. And that really had a lot of like violins and cellos. And it was a very emotional and intellectual artistic expression uh, through the soundtrack and and i felt like i wanted to match that sort of vibe and theme with uh praise and worship so one of the things i i did was i just i found a track on music vine shout out to music vine they are an amazing music platform i use them constantly now ever since i found them earlier on this year the team is is an amazing team uh, shout out to all of the the amazing guys and girls that work on the Music Vine um, platform. If you don't know about it, check out my video. It'll be somewhere on the screen here uh, where I talk about basically um, all the different royalty free music platforms and Music Vine is one of my favorites. So let's jump back into here. I, I got this Music Vine track. We'll just listen to it for a minute. So, you know, we have this sort of interesting music and then we also have the songs or the the uh, the dancers basically lined up to the music slightly like I wasn't really editing to the music, but I just want to have something that, that gave me a vibe. And, and then from there, what I did was the, the first thing I like to do with any of my clips is I always like getting a baseline in terms of 
the actual tonality, right? Just a normal sort of white balancing of a clip or balancing it to a place where I feel it it looks sort of natural. Um, for those of you, for those of you that don't know, I, I was shooting with the FS5, the Sony S- FS5 Mark II. I used a, a color board. For those of you that don't know what a color board is, I'm gonna I'm gonna go right into into this color board here. Click on it, and a co- the color board is like the the most basic sort of way to color correct in Final Cut Pro. Um, this is Final Cut Pro, and I know a lot of people kind of have reservations when it comes to using Final Cut Pro because they don't feel like Final Cut Pro is really a powerful software. But I'm showing I'm going to show you how I use it and how I get the looks that I look that that I love and that you love and that you you think are cinematic. I use only Final Cut Pro. I don't go into Adobe Premiere. I don't go into uh, DaVinci Resolve or anything else. It's just in 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 Final Cut Pro. So um, right over here, I have my my color my color board number one. Now, basically think of this as layers. So this is layer number one. We're just getting a balance. Um, We're just setting up the balance for this. So I'm going to check this on and this just shows you what I did, right? So I basically took it from this sort of greenish uh, washed out sort of tone to adding back a little bit of warmth. I took a little like out of the whites. I took a little bit of the green out of the whites um, and also out of the mids. And then I left the blacks where they need to be. And then I added um, some mid saturation. And then for exposure, I brought up my whites. I I actually I didn't crush my blacks. I'll, I'll show you. Um, I'll open this up here so it's a little bit easier to see. Um, I kind of crushed my blacks a bit because I wanted I wanted the blacks to be really, really pronounced and um, the mid tones I pushed down quite a bit. Now, for all intents and purposes, you really shouldn't go below um, zero. But because I knew it was going on a digital platform, I kind of had a little bit of latitude in terms of how I how I could express myself. So let's go back to that. So we have our, our color color board one. That's the first layer. Then what I did was I went to my LUT. So if I go to show you my LUT. Now what a LUT is, it's a lookup table. Um, so similar to a filter on on Photoshop that you would put onto a photo or in Instagram, um, it's the same sort of idea. It's kind of pre-made, predetermined color color effects. Um, so what I what I did here was I actually had a pre-made one that that I created myself called faces. And I mean, again, you can have a whole bunch of uh, of LUTs that you can load up. I, I have tons, but I really like um, the ones that I have here right now. These are the ones that I use the most. And to be honest with you, as a colorist or I don't consider myself a colorist, but if you are doing color grading or color correction, you're going to get to a point where you're, you're not going to need, you know, 80 thousand different LUTs, you're going to find the LUTs that work for your particular style and you're going to run with that. And that's what I would suggest to you. So these LUTs are sort of a group of of LUTs that I use on a regular basis. And then I also have my own personal LUTs that I that I load in on occasion. So I'm just going to click on the check mark here. And as you can see that that LUT, what it did was it took it took all the crushed blacks or the crushed blacks beyond zero and brought them up. And then um, it also brought up the reds a bit and uh, brought down the blues. But it basically created it created this really, really warm tone, which is which is cool because I wanted it to be this richness of tone. And the reason for that is because I I shot this whole project um during sunset and and i didn't want the sunset to be lost uh, using cool colors so i really wanted it to be warm initially and then i could always desaturate it or decrease it as i needed so that led us to the curves the color curves layer so what i wanted to do here was i wanted to kind of bring up the blacks a bit more to, to to kind of soften it up and this is where where um you can get that sort of cinematic feel because if you look at most films right especially older films, what makes them filmic or look filmic is, is the gradation from highlights to shadows. Um, and a lot of times, you know, those filmmakers that were going for a specific look 
will add punchiness. So they'll add extra contrast or the, to the shadows and to highlights, or they'll add, they'll add a certain sort of tint or color. Um, but for the most part, if you're looking at films, there's this sort of really nice gradation from um, highlight to shadows. So that's what I was trying to create when I was doing this. So I'm um, adding this layer, which was the color curve layer. So if I click that on, then as you can see, it takes it, it takes the blacks from being close to crushed and then brings it way up. Now, some people may not like this look. Some people may think it's just, it's a little bit too aggressive, but I really wanted to, to make that the, um, the blacks just really softer to soften the image a, bit, a little bit. Um, and then I also took my reds and I brought them slightly down in the middle um, just to help out with, with that punchiness. It just takes it, it, just took it down a bit. It just mellowed out the image a little bit. So we have three, we have one, two, three layers so far. Okay. And we're going into more of our artistic layers now. So this next one is custom LUT. I had another custom LUT, which was, um, the, um, the phantom LUTs. Now these phantom LUTs are really, really dope. Uh, they were created by a gentleman that lives in Australia and was a Sony shooter for several years, still is a Sony shooter. And he wants to create a LUT that actually took S log, uh, two and S log three and made them look more like Ari. Uh, footage and he did a really really good job with it um what i would say is you know just w when you do put the luts on there you want to make sure that you're adjusting uh the 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 saturation in the reds a little bit because sometimes i find it to be a little on the red side for skin tones especially darker skin tones but outside of that it's an amazing LUT system and i would really encourage you to to check it out i'm going to leave a link in the description below so anyways, um, I am using this this particular LUT, which is Phantom RE1 uh, Neutral PP7 um, LUT. So I'm going to click that on. And then that brings the, the red back in, but it, it brings it in in a, in a slightly different way. Um, so if I, if I take this curve off and I show you here, right, we took out some red and then we, we, we brought up our blacks. And then when I add this LUT in here, it adds a little, just just a little more punch, but in just the highlighted areas and sort of still keeps my blacks um, elevated and, and keeps them soft. So that's why I use that. And I and, and as you can see, I only use about 0 0.8, 0 0.18, I should say, um, of a mix. If I went all the way up, then it would just really, really be too far. So I only use just enough just to add just that little kick, right? It's like it's like ketchup. It's like sauce. You can't put too much sauce on on, on a burger and stuff like that. You got to still eat the burger. And, you know what I mean? Anyways, uh, I digress. So uh, the last thing is this uh, this little plugin right here, and it's not a little plugin. It's a, it's actually a very uh, well known plugin. It's called Film Convert. Film Convert is my favorite thing in the world. I always use it for every one of my projects. It's my secret sauce. That's not really secret because a lot of people know about Film, film Convert. Um, they are an amazing team. And the thing that I really like about Film Convert is that it actually emulates. It's, it's not just a layer that they put on top of your footage. It actually emulates or simulates the um, the texture and the value and the exposure values of film stock, right, of, of well-known film stock. So um, they actually, this is an older plugin for, this is their 4K plugin of Film Convert Pro 2 uh, for Final Cut Pro, but they're actually working on the, um, the new version for Final Cut Pro which I'm really excited about testing and trying out, which will be coming sooner, sooner rather than later. Um, but yeah, I, I have this plugin. I'm going to click on, on this and you'll see what it just did. So I just flicked it off and then flicked it on. So now it kind of gave that sort of warmish glow, but also it gives us film grain. So if I'm going to, if I zoom in and if I, if I bring it, right over here you, you, you guys can see a little bit better so I'm gonna I'm gonna turn that off so that's before that's after 
That's before. This is after. I really, really like this shot here um, because, you know, it has dynamic range. It has both of the girls in it. And and at the same time, you can see the clouds and everything else. So if we go back to our settings and layers here, I'm going to go to a color board. I hit color board and that's my set layer or my, my first sort of like setting the, the, the tones properly. Then I go to custom LUT and that adds in that sort of pop. OK, and then from there, I did my my color curves. Right. And if you want to see my color curves again, I'll just I'll show you that it's the same sort of thing. It's this slight S curve. I brought up the blacks a bit and then, uh, you know, punched up the whites to give some contrast, but then also to have a nice sort of uh, uh, cinematic roll off. Right. Then what I did was I went to custom LUT and I added my custom LUT uh, to add a little bit more punch back in there. Film convert. Right. And film convert really changes the. So this kind of looks really digital, right? The blue looks like a real digital sky. Um, and that's something that happens with pretty much all the footage I, I look at, especially specifically with with um, with Sony cameras, like the blues and, and the and the greens are like super punchy, like it's it's a little overboard. And, you know, when you are color grading uh, footage like this, you have to be aware or at least um be sensitive to the fact of how the camera interprets color and, and then know how to to bring that down to make it look a little bit more realistic. Right now, it doesn't look that realistic, right? I like the colors, but it just looks just overdone. So then when I bring in the film convert, film convert really tones down all of that, it tones down the sky, it tones down their skin tone. It really blends in all of the tones together, right? So like, Although they're they're in the foreground, the girls in the foreground, and then we see the background. They the colors and the and the the emphasis on the colors all kind of blend together to make one cohesive shot. So I'll show you again. This is how it looked before, where it's like the sky is super pronounced. They are are pronounced in terms of their skin tone, and then you have this green background. There's just a lot of separation in the shot. But when you add the film convert, it adds. It just blends in. Um, all of the tones a little bit better together. And then I added in the hue saturation curve, which uh, just just kind of mellowed out the skin tones a little bit more. Um, this this was an interesting clip here because I, I literally had to pull back on so many areas and just kind of pull up on just the, the light that was hitting her. This was literally at dusk, dusk, dusk. And if you if you even look at the, the actual tonality, like there's everything is black and we're just getting a little bit of light hitting her face. Um, I want to go to this last area because a lot of people asked about about how I got this sort of look here um, with the sun, the sunset, this one right here. Right. First, first and foremost, I, I literally didn't have to do much with this um, because it was already so beautiful. But let's let's go to my my actual color settings here. So I'm actually going to uncheck all of these so you can see the original, what the original actually looked like. So the original actually already looked very close to the finished product. The only difference really is that obviously we're, we're adding layers to the footage to make certain areas pop a little more, add more contrast, add more definition, et cetera, et cetera. So first things first, we did color the uh, the color board, and I kind of went crazy with the color board. <laughs> I really wanted to go really dramatic and re really crazy. As you can see, I over crushed all my blacks, and then I brought up my whites because I really wanted to create this sort of silhouetted look. And again, I may have broke some rules. I get it, whatever else, but I, I just wanted to. I wanted to really, really get that silhouette. That was that was the biggest thing for me. Then when I when I go to my LUT, my custom LUT, it adds that sort of golden tone that I wanted. I wanted to get that golden tone tone. Um, and again, I'll I'll show you I'll show you a breakdown of all these things. So this was my this is basically what I did with with the uh, color board. The first color board, I just brought down the blacks, and then I brought up the saturation. And then uh, for the the custom LUT, I used my custom LUT faces LUT, 
uh, which is which is long story. It was it, it's one of my favorite LUTs, but it was actually made by accident. Anyways, uh, color curve. So I added my color curve now, and if you look, the color curve brings brings all the blacks back up slightly. Um, then I went to custom LUT, which was the Phantom RE One uh, Neutral Neutral uh, PP Seven. All right, and then that brought brought the blacks up a little bit more. Then I went to film convert, and then film convert right away helped me to bring everything back to where it needs to be. But still, it's very crunchy on the black end, which is fine, which is what I wanted, All right? And then lastly, hue and saturation curve, okay? Now, when we're looking at, at this, I'm just gonna remove this clip for a minute here so you can see so if you look at this clip, right, at its when it's the reason why I had to bring it down so much is because I knew that the sun was going to burst through. And when the sun burst through, it would be really, really bright. So what I did was I, I just wanted to comp over and compensate the blacks so that we could still see um, those cool details in the flags and in the wings. Um, but then at the same time, when the when the sun burst through, it wasn't so overpowering that it just over overexposed everything in the shot. All right. So that is kind of an overview, a quick overview of how I color corrected the praise and worship film that I created uh, with O'Shane Howard. And um, I hope that this tutorial taught you something new. Um, I hope that you learned something. If you have questions, please leave them below. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing to the channel, uh, share this video with others and continue to learn and, and be positive. All right. Until the next time, peace.